Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Richard Kipngeno. I work here at Nature Kenya as a budding and membership officer. And it's a great privilege uh, to have you on board this afternoon as we explore uh, the world of the water frog. Uh, this talk uh, has been uh, organized by the Kenya Hepatofauna Working Group and will be presented to us uh, by Thomas Odeo. Uh, the today, today's title is Unfailing the Mysteries, a tale of unique reproduction, fragile habitats, and conservation challenges for Taita Hills What a Frog. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this just to let you know that this presentation is being recorded and we will upload it in our Nature Kenya's YouTube channel. You can visit uh, whenever you feel like. And uh, also I will request all our participants to remain muted and we give uh, our today's speaker ample time to take us through the presentation. And should you be having any question, any concern, feel free to raise them through the chat box and our speaker will strive his level best to go through all of them at the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to take, through, uh, to take you through who our speaker today is, uh, Thomas Odeo is a research volunteer at the National Museums of Kenya, specializing in hepatology and ichthyology. He, he is engaged in impactful projects, including the conservation of the Taita Hills water frog and assessing reptile distribution in Shimba Hills National Reserve, which is his thesis. In the year 2022-2022, he was part of the Kenya Hepatofauna Working Group that rescued 16 terrapins from a degraded wetland in Nairobi Eastern Pipers adjacent to Infinity Industrial Park and relocated them to City Park. He holds a master's in animal ecology from Kenyatta University, and he is proficient in data science, analytics, and GIS. Thomas is an active member of Nature Kenya, and he is the current treasurer of the Kenya Hepatofauna Working Group. And ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to welcome our speaker on board. Welcome, Thomas, take us through. Uh, Thomas, unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I can hear you loud and clear. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you for that uh, long introduction, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> you must have done a lot of research <laughs> and uh, I appreciate a lot for the opportunity. As uh, he has introduced, I'm Thomas Odeo. I'm a research volunteer at National Museum of Kenya and uh, also an active member of Nature Kenya, uh, mainly through the uh, Kenya Hapatapaona Working Group, which I've been a member at least for the last three years. And uh, I'm also a member of uh, Kithilo, uh, Samaki Working Group and also part of the Nature Kenya Youth Committee. And I'm privileged to be here and uh, doing what, uh, what uh, the great work we've been contributing towards conservation. Um, before I start, I would like to introduce the, to recognize the presence of uh, Ron Kimani and Atubo Howard. Uh, Atubo Howard is the chair of uh, the chairman of the Kenya Patafauna Working Group, and Ron Kimani is the organizing secretary. Uh, before I start my presentation, probably the chairman can say a few words. Uh, thank you, Tom, for accepting to represent us on this topic. And I won't talk much, I just ask you to go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as Kenya Patafauna Working Group, we've been doing a lot of work, uh, especially for the past one year or two, we've been very, very active. And uh, besides the educational awareness we've been doing to schools, uh, besides such kind of activity like uh, rescuing the terrapins but, uh, in different areas, besides the terrapins and the snakes and other kind of Patafauna, 
species. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the activity we undertook this year was a, a, a look at a Taitawati frog, which was, is mainly found in in Taita Hills Forest, uh, that's the coastal part of Kenya. And I'll go ahead and start my presentation, mm -hmm. whereby uh, it's titled The Unveiling the Mystery, a Tale of the Unique Taita Hills Swati Frog. Uh, its scientific name is Kalulina Dawida, and uh, and the common name is the, the Taita Hills Swati Frog. As you can see from the photograph, it's a, it's a very beautiful creature, and we will see more of it as we continue. Uh, our talk structure is uh, is divided into four parts. Uh, we will talk about what's unique about this title hills what if wrong. What did we find out? And to be precise, the activity was done uh, early this year, which is an ongoing activity, it's still ongoing. And uh, that was, I think, uh, uh, around April and May. And uh, uh, we... We appreciate for the support we've received so far. The second part is the, we, uh, I'll briefly talk about the current conservation status and then dive into the, the threats and finally finish with, with what can we do. S straight to the, co uh, the conservation status. Uh, based on the IUCN assessment, uh, the Taitawati frog is critically endangered and the population is decreasing. Um, as we know, the, the IUCN has different uh, uh, levels of uh, uh, grading the, the level of uh, uh, oh, what term can I use, Ron? Uh, the level of threat it has and this kind of, uh, the kind of threat to this species is a, uh, is critically endangered. And as you look at its behavior, the habitat and uh, all other kind of uh, natural history, we will see why they have uh, classified this as critically endangered. Uh, I'll dive straight into one of the uniqueness about this uh, species. Uh, that's the, 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 the Taitawati frog. It's toad like eh? body. Uh, body has what? As we have seen from the photo, and we will see more photos. Uh, it's a. It has what? And one of the features uh, we we understand from. One of the features we understand from, uh, one of the features of amphibians is a uh, their their kind of their kind of skins is susceptible to any changes in climate, be it a uh, temperature, be it lack of moisture, and be it a uh, be it a um, uh, habitat fragmentation. And in this kind of, uh, um, from the meaning of amphibians, we will expect that this uh, this kind of uh, uh, frog will will be in a, in a in a wetland. But for this kind of uh, of frog, the Taitawati frog. Surprisingly, it's only found in the forest, and and it's only restricted eh, to the indigenous forest of Taita Hills. It's not found anywhere else in the world apart from Kenya. And in Kenya, by being specific, it's only found in Taita Hills uh, forest and in very specific uh, forest block blocks of Taita Hills, as we will mention here. And one of them is the uh, the, the uh, the Ngangao forest block, we have the Chavia forest block, we have the Ndiveni, we have Macha, we have Mwachora, we have Boma, we have Yale, we have Makadeni, and we have Fururu. And we will see what's more unique about this habitat that, that this, uh, this frog is only found there. And one of the most defining uh, a habitat for this uh, uh, for uh, for this frog is the indigenousity of this forest in that uh, as we look at the at the at the uh, in the following slides the kind of habitat it thrives in mm, is only we can't get exotic and there are various features we can get from indigenous forest and one of them is uh, the kind of leaf litter in that forest uh, 
in that in exotic uh, in exotic forest we usually don't get the kind of leaf litter on the ground that we'll get in the forest uh, in an indigenous forest and from this kind of uh, of a micro ecosystem uh, this is what enables this frog to 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 survive and here is another photo we can see from the from the previous we saw the the one was a red coloration and this one is a is a silver like coloration and one of the unique uh, findings we got from the, our study uh, at the uh, at the coast that's a tighter hill say uh, we were able to to, to establish that uh, from the from the photo from the first slide uh, it was the first time we were photographing that kind of coloration of this species, uh, of this frog. It has never been photographed before. And uh, my team, that included the, the chair, that's uh, Howard Atubwa, and uh, 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 Vincent Muchai from the National Museum, and uh, John, uh, John from the, and Mukombola from the Gangao Biodiversity Group. We were able to, to come across a unique coloration that has never been photographed before. And we are proud that you are part of the team that was able to come up with this distinction. And we hope that we'll do more research and be able to, to, to find that kind of, uh, to be able to explore and find out the differences in coloration and, and uh, why. And one of the unique things we found out is that the coloration was only found in Chavia. Uh, we didn't find, that kind of coloration in the other forest habitat, in the other forest block. Uh, the other forest block, we only found this coloration, which is appearing on the screen, and this uh, this mm -hmm. silver-like, but the orange coloration is uh, was only found in that one forest, that's Javier, and that's a question for more research and discussion uh, for future researchers in this field. Uh, we go to the natural history, reproduction. What's more unique about this species, uh, this frog? As we understand, amphibians are ex uh, usually go through four, 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 four stages of development. That's a uh, egg, uh, mm, my mind is blank, I've forgotten the other stage, but there's egg, then there's tadpole, uh, until it goes into the until it goes into the adult stage, but for this uh, for, for for this frog, it doesn't go into the tadpole stage. Uh, why? Tad tadpole are expected to be found in wetlands, eh? a place whereby uh, we have water, and I think uh, some of us can relate with that. Uh, but for this case, it's only found in a forest. How is it able to? to go through the, the normal reproduction cycle. And as we, ca we can see here, um, we can see a female uh, brooding the eggs. And the, these are five, the, these are one of the encounters we got, uh, a, a female with around 40 eggs. Uh, now, the, the development process, as I said, it's, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a, a tadpole stage. And then usually the female takes a protective role for about a month a month or uh, two months. And in this case, um, it usually in the in the dry season or, or upon which this the, 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 this process occurs. And by the time that the wet season starts, we are able to the, the, the little froglets have already have already hatched and uh, they are starting to, to to grow. So one of the unique why we say the mis mystery and the uniqueness of this frog is that unlike all most of the other frogs that undergo the tadpole stage, this one does not undergo the tad tadpole stage, and that's why we insist that uh, its habitat is so unique in in the case that. Uh, if at all we are able to to destroy the already natural forest of uh, indigenous forest of Taita Hills, then means that we are risking the survivability of this uh, of this frog. So here, as the arrows points, th those are the kind of eggs who, uh, 
this frog so always lays, and here is a female uh, uh, brooding on it. And we got several of these. And uh, one of the aim is uh, uh, of this kind, large number of eggs in that they, they increase the chances of uh, of hatching. And the few that remain, uh, the, the non-fertile ones, are able to provide the moisture, the, the moisture to the few eggs that that moisture supplements what will have been provided if the frog was in a wetland or if the frog was undergoing the tadpole stage. We'll go to the next uh, uh, slide. And this is about the movement and uh, other behaviors. And this is one of also the interesting parts about the this frog. If mostly for us, if we hear about a frog, if we think of, of, of jumping, jumping. But for this kind of frog, it doesn't jump. In uh, in the uh, in the Swahili name, it's called mwa, mwa ngombe, or kiangombe from the local uh, local dialects uh, in Taita, and this means that it it walks like a cow, as uh, I'll show you in the video. And one of its adaptation, it has short legs, and long fingers. In that, uh, unlike other other kind of frogs like the the xenopus or the the taikadina that have long legs that uh, enable them propel them to jump this kind of frog has short legs and this exposes to another kind of adaptation that enables it to climb trees and vines and usually this enables its adaptation in that it's active at night and during the day you will find it a uh, uh, hiding um, either uh, as we'll see in one of the videos as as it walks towards uh, its hiding place but at night it uh, it's more active and you'll find it you'll encounter it uh, uh, on on small trees or vines as i've said i've explained it walks rather than hope mm. Sorry, then uh, one of the unique features is leaf litter and decaying logs during the day. And where do we find this kind of habitats? This kind of habitats are found in uh, uh, indigenous forest, and one of uh, and that's one of the features of Taita Hills, the forest block of of the forest blocks in Taita Hills, and that's why it's so unique in that. This the frog is endemic to that uh, to that area, and in one of our findings, even not one in all our of our encounters, eh, we one of our method we were we were one of the hapatopona methods we were doing is a sampling method is a walking through a transect and uh, uh, turning the leaf litter. That's when you are able to to see this, uh, th these frogs. So the kind of leaf litter, leaf litter matters. Eh? And we know that uh, exotic trees uh, with the kind of leaf litter they have, it's not easily decomposed. But the kind of leaf litter for uh, uh, indigenous forest is easily, easily decomposed. And it, it raises a lot of butterfly effects. That's the chain effect of uh, of an ecosystem, whereby the decomposition of the leaf litter leads to the it creates another habitat for different microorganisms like uh, insects uh, that can enable um, the can propel the feeding mechanism for this frog. And I've, as I've said, the the frog is also a nocturnal frog, and here we will find one of the sampling the, uh, technique we are using is sampling at night uh, until nine in the evening, and here we also encountered a couple of uh, of uh, tighter what uh, tighter hills what frog, and here you will see it climbing the trees or vines um, as a form of adaptation. Probably we could explain that uh, it's a uh, it, it, it might be running away from predators or um, it, it, it's a topic for study and try to explain that. 
uh, the other thing is a uh, males call to attract breeding females and like many frogs uh, they do call and especially when you go to our tap our wetland uh, mostly at night you'll find it uh, you'll you'll find most frogs calling and in this case for a frog it has also the same adaptation you'll find it mostly at night you'll find it uh, crowing uh, i cannot imi imitate the voice uh, but uh, it's more like a cow cow voice whereby it's pro cro yeah? uh uh, I'm not able to produce the sound very well, but I hope you understand what I mean. And the, 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 that's one of the one of the features for for the one of the features for the reproduction processes. Then uh, the other thing, uh, one of the primary uh, uh, thing that led us uh, factors that led us to to try and understand and understand this frog are uh, the threats the the frog is facing currently and one of the threats is especially the human encroachment uh, into our forest and uh, and uh, and habitat and here we were we've been able i and my team and i have been able to to come up with um with an with an outline uh, a situational model a situational model for the frog and to at least show that uh, to show the world what kind of threats uh, this frog is facing and in our together with the in relation to to the past studies and whatever we found out uh, this frog has uh, five direct threats uh, and this one of them is limited remaining habitat what do we mean by that as from the from the second slide, we mentioned the forest blocks. What does that mean? It means that uh, already the Taita Hills forest is already being uh, being fragmented. It's already being divided into blocks, mm -hmm. and already people are staying in those blo forest blocks. What does this uh, mean? It leads to another direct threat, which is a large distance between. This means that from one forest block to another, which at least uh, took 30 minutes or uh, sometimes an hour, or uh, from one location to another, it means that these frogs are, never, are not able to migrate from one forest, one forest block to another. And this leads us to another threat. Um, fragmented indigenous forest habitat. And in this case, that's Taita Hills. Yeah? What we encountered is we were able to see, uh, mm, I don't have uh, a pictorial of the habitat, I've not included it here, but we were able to, if you're on top of the, uh, of the hills and look to the other forest block, in between you could see a settlement, human settlement. And with human settlement, uh, without knowledge, these people end up planting exotic trees, eh, which leads us to the next direct threat, is that people end up planting these forests, uh, exotic for forests like eucalyptus. And in this case, they end up breaking the connectivity between one forest, one indigenous forest to the other. And lastly, what the last direct threat is logging and wood harvesting. And this has been one of the major problems. And uh, I, I think the relevant authorities are trying to de deal with it. That includes Kenya Forest Service and the government, but it's still a major problem because uh, on most occasion, uh, policies could be implemented at the top government uh, agencies, but on the ground, people are continuing to Besides just logging, uh, measures that uh, that uh, manage how the locals uh, uh, harvest wood in, in the forest, and this is one of the major challenges. In that, there is no way you will go to 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 the forest and uh, to, to to a local community and tell them don't harvest wood here, because they have been doing this for centuries. 
Now, why, how can you go to the ground and try to tell them, don't have a stool because we have tighter, uh, we have a frog here that is unique and, uh, and, and only endemic in this area. So th that's one of the threats we also established. And in this case, um, the situation model shows us the impact of this direct threat. For, for large distance between population, uh, which leads to habitat fragmentation, uh, we can see that uh, this increases vulnerability to diseases in, in that when uh, we have uh, we have chytrid fungus, and in this case, uh, it's still an ongoing process. We hope that we'll be able to to do more studies and be be established that he, is the tighter hill swati frog susceptible to such kind of uh, a fungus and other amphibian diseases in that if the forest is fragmented and it's only found in one forest like Nganga or Chavia, if the disease comes, that means that it will be able to wipe out the entire population in that area. What does that mean? Hmm? It means that the population of this Taitawati frog is going to decline. And that the same case relates to wood harvest and logging. One of the one of the encounters we got, uh, not just one, several, and even in other studies, they have shown that they have they have shown that these frogs, uh, beside the leaf litter, it also thrives well in uh, rotting rog logs, in that the trees that have fallen and they are rotting. That's where it's able to reproduce. That's where it's able to hide. What does that mean that? if the community, the local community goes there and harvest the wood, what does that mean? It means that, uh, it means that these, these uh, uh, the population of this, uh, of this frog is at threat and the likelihood that the population is, will decline is very high in that it will not be able to reproduce. It will not be able to find a suitable habitat to, 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 to reproduce and uh, to, to enable the reproduction process. And I think uh, for researchers in the in the in, in here and even non researchers, I think we've studied other kind of animals and we've seen that uh, reproduction process is triggered by certain factors within the natural history of that species. And if the if those factors are not there, the reproduction process will not be uh, propelled forward. What does that mean? It means that the the others will not be able to produ reproduce, and that uh, and as a resultant factor, we will be able to, to to see that the population is is declining, and that same 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 factor leads us to uh, another direct threat uh, uh, related to limited remaining habitat. As I've mentioned, the few habitats in Taita Hills. And Taita Hills is only one. We don't have a replacement of Taita Hills. And the, the forest block are few. We don't have a replacement for the forest block. What does this mean if people go there and encroach? Uh, we harvest logs. Uh, uh, we do logging. We harvest the the indigenous for uh, the indigenous state that's happening. What does that mean? It means that it, uh, we are altering the ecosystem dynamics. What does that mean if we 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 are able to if we plant exotic trees? What does that mean? It means that we are altering the ecosystem dynamics. And what happens if we alter the ecosystem di dynamic? We reduce the reproductive success in that the species won't the frog won't have the suitable habitat to reproduce. And this leads to a risk of extinction. In near future, if at all we end up replacing the indigenous forest with the exotic trees, or we end up encroaching those kind of indigenous habitats uh, and forest, we, Taita Hills will only be a myth or it will only be found in tales and books, but not in really life. And this is one of the unique uh, pride that Taita Hills should be the people of Taita Hills and uh, people of the count Boy County should be able to 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 be proud of. Uh, 
Another direct threat we came across is a population isolation. And this also relates to uh, the direct threat is fragmented indigenous forest habitat and then conversion of uh, exotic uh, exotic plantation. And then the, the indirect threat is population isolation and then decline in prey availability. What does this mean? It means that uh, the fragmented indigenous forests, which they already fragmented, Taita Hills is already fragmented. Yeah? This mean, and that's why we are able to, to see that, we're able to discover that we can only we can only find a few in Chadia, we can only find a few in Ganga, we can only find a few in uh, Bololo. So what does this mean to, to the population? It means that the population, the isolation of the population, uh, it limits gene flow in that there is no interbreeding, the, 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 there is no crossbreeding in that the gene, the, the, the frog can exchange uh, genetic information and as an adaptation and and evolution uh, process, uh, this the inability of gene flow uh, exposes the species to so many many threats, including the uh, the potential of being wiped out because of diseases, and then um, the uh, the fragmented forest, uh, which leads to population isolation. Uh, the the frog is not able to migrate from one forest to another, given that it's a frog. These are not that migratory migratory species like we could say that a bird will fly to from Kenya to Cape Town or from Kenya from from Amboseli to to to, to Savo. No, these are, we understand that these are crawling organisms. They are they are terrestrial and again crawling organisms that use the ground and the planting the fragmenting these forests and putting up uh, um, settlements in between the forest and then uh, planting exotic trees uh, limits its ability to migrate from one area to another probably for for population uh, for, for production and uh, as you have seen in birds uh, birds uh, usually migrate from like the flamingos we've seen that uh, depending on the availability of food, they can migrate from one area, from one lake, Lake Naivasha, to another lake. But fragmenting this for forest for the Taita Hills, they won't be able to migrate from one area to another. So those are some of the findings we, we got from the area. And as I was explaining, why is Taita Hills important for the for the for the for the frog? And before before be, before I talk about the the or or I, I, I'll finish I, I'll show the video for the frog walking at the end of uh, at the end of the this presentation. And why is Taita Hills important for the frog? Why are we interested in saving the Taita Hills? Uh, forest frog one of the uh, one of the reasons why we are interested in this is uh, this frog is only found in in taita in the forest blocks it's endemic to that region meaning that if if at all we are able to, if at all we will wipe out the taita hill forest that means it will go away with the with the with the with the with the with the frog, and we didn't just meet the frog alone. We also met other other kind of amphibians that are only found there, and like the Taita Sicilians, it's a snake-like uh, amphibian. So what does that mean? Hmm? The microecological requirement for the survival of this uh, species is only found in that area, and the role of this indigenous forest is is important for the frog permeable skin. And how, 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 why do we say so? We say so because this frog won't be found in water. Its life cycle has already adjusted to be in, uh, to fit the, the terrestrial uh, ecosystem. 
as we've said, it it jumps the tadpole stage, the, the tadpole stage, and goes straight into uh, juvenile uh, froglets. So the availability of indigenous forest and indigenous forests we mean that the availability of rotting logs, the availability of uh, uh, leaf litter. And if, for those who have gone uh, probably for hikes or for gone to forest, especially particularly indigenous forest, you've seen uh, leaf litter, especially in this big forest like Kakamega, the kind of leaf litter uh, it has in that whenever you lift the whenever you lift you lift the leaves you could see moisture on the ground especially on the wet seasons mm. even on the dry seasons they are still there but even on the wet seasons you see the kind of moisture on the ground this is the kind of moisture these frogs survive on this means that the forest blocks of data hills particularly made of indigenous forest okay, support the kind of uh, the kind of uh, provides a unique habitat, eh? and and I uh, I'll show you in the video how the frogs was walking and going to hide this such kind of a habitat, mm? and it means that this habitat is so crucial. Eh? Any any kind of alteration of the ecosystem eh, risk its extinction. Then we as scientists and the community, what can we do? And this is where we come in as a, a group, more, a working group of for Nature Kenya, Kenya Habitat for no working group. This is where we come in. And one of our mandates is uh, community education. And one of our goals when we went there is teach the community. And here we are, we have uh, Mkombola hosted us uh, for a few days, Mkombola and John here and uh, we met with the Gangao Biodiversity in, uh, a Biodiversity Group and here is Vincent uh, Mishai. Here we were talking with the community, we were showing them what they have, what unique uh, besides just the, the birds, what other creatures do they have in, the, in that area? And one of the species we were more focused on is the Taitawati frog. One of our goals is was to educate the community. And in our finding, uh, we did interviews to the, with the community. And in our findings, we established that 60% of the women, 60% of the women are not aware of its existence. They are not aware of the existence of this frog. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that even some of them have never encountered it. So what does that mean? It means that, especially for the for the women who go to to especially for wood harvesting, uh, uh, it means that even if they go and pick a, a log that is rotting, and they encounter that frog probably uh, brooding a female brooding there, they won't. They want to be aware that these are uh, Taitawati frog uh, or Kiangomba, as they call it uh, frog with the local dialects. These are unique uh, frog that is only found here. And they'll just end up uh, probably kicking the frog away and taking the, the logs to go and use as firewood. So one of our goals was to, to teach the community, interact with them, ask their level of knowledge. Do they know the, the existence of frog? Hmm? What can we do? What they, can they tell us? What can we do? What can? How can we help them try to conserve the forest and in that return, trying to conserve the frog? So one of the resolution was to plant trees. And in this case, we did plant trees. We, we linked up with, the, uh, with our host, John Maganga and Mkombola, and uh, we we were able to to buy indigenous trees and given that it's an ongoing project and uh, this was the first phase we planted uh, more than 500 tree seedlings around Ngangao or forest block and so far the the report is well the at least 90% of them survived and we are hoping that uh, we are going to do more 
and even meet with other groups, including women groups, and uh, plant more trees and try to to ensure that the the indigenousity of this forest block is enabled. And finally, uh, what our what was our resolution from the meetings with the group? One of the resolution was a. Uh, continue engagement with the community and stakeholders because these are the primary stakeholders to, to this area. Uh, as a foreigner to that land, I won't just go there and plant trees. I won't just go there, go there and, and advise them, the, stop this, stop that. Mm -hmm. So one of the, that's why we used a, a focus group uh, interviews and kind of engagement in trying to come up with a dialogue. What are the possible solution we can come up with? Yeah? ensuring that the community is aware of this, the presence of these frogs, and uh, the community is uh, is able to, to contribute towards the protection of the frog. And uh, another thing was monitoring efforts and uh, strategies in that uh, let, it, let it be a continuous uh, um, monitoring activity like we do for birds. Yeah? Uh, let it be a continuous activity, especially for for the people on the ground like John and Mkombola, they can be doing this uh, uh, through our education to them. For them, um, being able to monitor and, and know the population trend, even if uh, through their biodiversity group, the Ngakao Biodiversity Group and other group, having this kind of information, knowing the trend, uh, uh, where the population is, is declining or increasing year in year out they can be able to, they can be able to to inform conservation action be it nature kenya be it other scientists be it the government and what efforts can they input so that they increase uh, they are able to to protect not only the species but even other kind of animals or wildlife in that area including birds uh, uh, the unique markets we have the areas and other kind of amphibians like the the titus sicilians and other kind of snakes as well and uh, one of the other resolution was uh, to increase studies on the type of uh, tree species uh, density and uh, the uh, of the freshly and decomposing leaf litter this is something we are hoping to to establish uh, the, the the next time we go back to the fields and these were one of our goals in towards uh, when you go back uh, the team the Vincent uh, Howard and uh, other researchers from the National Museum together with the with the members of Kenya Hapatapaona working group this is one of the things we are going to un to understand in that in the future we are able to know what kind of species these frogs thrives in mm -hmm. what kind of uh, tree with that kind of tree or trees, we can be able to know this uh, and this type of leaf litter uh, supports these species. Mm -hmm. And with that, we can be, it can also inform us the kind of trees uh, we will be planting uh, when going back or when other parties or stakeholders come in and say that we want to plant trees. Uh, they, they are able to know this kind of trees uh, uh, will enable the survivability of this uh, the, the, this frog. And by us understanding that, we will also be informing other other researchers, uh, those that deal with uh, with birds, those that deal with uh, snakes, those that deal with monkeys, uh, because I know they also have their kind of micro habitat they rely on. Uh, we will be able to know and link is. Are these trees we are planting that uh, enable the survivability of this uh, frog? Are they linked with it? Is there a way they are linked with other kind of species? Mm? The, do do bird uh, build nest on this kind of tree? Is there a relation between the predator and prey relationship between these uh, trees? Do we have ants on those trees that these frogs can eat? So this is the kind of information we're going to establish. Uh, in our future studies. And then lastly, we are we're hoping that uh, not just us, but uh, 
through our education activity through Nature Kenya and even the government through the county government. And this is the kind of report we are hoping to we'll share with the with the county government uh, uh, later this year. And this is the kind of information we are going to share with them in that they are able to know we have this forest. This is like our jewelry. This is like our, our unique gold. Eh? How can we use this forest? How are they? How can we try to connect them? And with connecting them, how can we make sure that they are tourist attraction? Mm. They sell tighter hills. Eh? How can we try to manage eh? That's probably through the county government. How can they manage settlement in between the forest while also trying to maintain the connectivity through indigenous forest in between Chavia, Gangao, or, or Mbololo forest block? In that uh, the, the frogs can migrate from one area to the other. And here is part of the team. Uh, as I say, thank you to the to the end of the presentation. And before I I, I, I finish, uh, I'll show you the video whereby you you'll be able to see you'll be able to see uh, how the frogs movement works. Here is a uh, John Mkombola, uh, we have Howard, we have uh, um, other guys from the ground, the Gangao Biodiversity Group. They, we have been sent who you saw from the photo uh, addressing the community. And we do appreciate uh, for the support, for all the support we've received from, from the Nature Kenya so far, uh, the National Museum, um, the Dawida Biodiversity Conservation CDO, and then uh, part of our sponsors is the, the Mohammed bin Zaid Species Conservation Fund, which also oh, was the primary funder for the, or oh, is the primary funder for the project. Thank you so much. Thank Before you. I dive into the questions, let me just stop sharing and show you the video for the, share, 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 the video for the for the frog walking, and the, and the, the uh, to show you how unique the frog is, and can you see my screen? Yes, you can see the screen. So you, you can see the frog uh, moving. That's how it works. So you can imagine, uh, and there, there it goes to hide in. Uh, that's Vincent Mshai from the National Museum of Kenya. That's how they hide, as he has explained. And that's a leaf litter from indigenous uh, forest. Uh, just showing how important this kind of habitat is crucial for the for the frog. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas, for that insightful presentation about uh, the what if frog. It is very um, educative and informative. Uh, so, uh, some, okay, Rupi Magat has raised uh, a question uh, in the chat box. And uh, before I go there, I will also encourage uh, other participants, if you have um, any question, this is the interactive uh, uh, last bit of the presentation where we will be interacting with the speaker directly. So you can uh, raise up your hand and we'll give you the opportunity to um, ask your question or uh, give the speaker the compliments that you want to as uh, we we move like that. So uh, the first question from Rupi, she's asking a super talk. Thank you so much. What is the population of the what if frog? And what are the what's for? Only 2% of the indigenous forest remains. What is the lifespan? Okay, Tom. Uh, you thank it? you, Rupi, for the for the questions. Um, we cannot uh, from the from the from our study we are still doing so we cannot uh, estimate the the current population of the wati frog in that 
we still have to, we still have to finish the we still have to study it for monitor it, uh, both uh, dry and wet seasons so currently we can't establish the the actual population of the frog but we went during the dry seasons and uh, we we had uh, at least uh, 20 encounters of the frogs from the different uh, from the different uh, uh, the, that's the total from the different uh, forest blocks and that was the dry seasons and and during the wet season it's raining uh, currently but uh, we're planning to go back we expect to get more population given that they have already reproduced the the frogs have already hatched but uh, it's not that much I'll, I'll say so and then uh, the second uh, question is uh, uh, what what are the it's called the uh, tighter hill sweat frog from the photo you could see what's on the skin uh, let me i'll show you let me if richie you can allow me to to share the screen again yes please do i'll go to the first slide you can see my screen yes you can see let's go to the first slide uh, you can see the words, uh, uh, and if you are keen enough, you could see some some excretion. And one of the one of the benefit one of it is a is a defensive mechanism. Uh, uh, it's a defensive mechanism in, in that the the words produces this kind of fluids, and these fluids, uh, if you have a cut on your skin. It's not, it's not venomous, but it will provide an itching, um, an an itching sensation. It won't kill you, but it provides an itching sensation. So if it was a predator, uh, probably a predator, like probably you could say a bigger chameleon, or you could say some snake, which is which is not venomous, but uh, which cannot produce venomous, but uh, it can just follow the the frog at all. Probably the 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 secretion the, the the secretion produced through the words uh, acts as a defensive mechanism to to ask the predator then second the 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 words uh, the, the words act as a as a moisturizer to the skin remember this a frog that does not uh, does not stay in uh, in uh, in any wetland it relies on moisture uh, on terrestrial habitat in this indigenous forest so it's the the, the secretion produced through the it, the secretion produced the through the words on the skin acts as a protective layer towards a uh, desiccation or uh, in i'll say desiccation or a uh, evapotranspiration of uh, moisture from the skin then uh, another say uh, another question is uh, Mm. Only two percent of indigenous forest remains. This is one of the biggest worries we have for for the frog. Not just the frogs, even the other species in in Taita Hills. Uh, this is an interactive session. Uh, you can comment or raise up your hand. Uh, we have received. You can affirm my 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 point is we have Taita trash. Is it tighter trash? I'm a tighter trash. The trash. bird. The tighter yes. trash, yes. And it's only found in that area. Yes. I assume so. Then uh, there's, a, there's a, a monkey only found there, a species of a monkey. If hard, you can remind me uh, uh, the species of a monkey only found there. So these kind of things, th th these kind of uh, uh, statistics showing that only two percent of indigenous forest remains in Taita Hills is a worrying trend because it indicates that uh, we as a as a conservationist we have a lot to do not only just increasing the area size of the Taita Hills but also we can increase the area but what are we doing with the community what 
and we know nowadays mostly the community wants to benefit from from such kind of activity. How is the community benefiting? What initiative are we doing on the ground that benefits the community and as well protects the forests? So uh, thank you for pointing out that. And this is something we are hoping that not just us, but even the government and other stakeholders can engage in. What's the lifespan? The lifespan uh, here is a, uh, Mostly frogs can last even, from the literature I've read, they can go even up to 12 years, depending on the species of the frog. So for this frog, it goes through the different generations and uh, I cannot pinpoint the exact uh, lifespan of it because it has not been studied. Um, not even, uh, we, we have been studying it for the past one year, but, uh, Previous studies haven't encountered any study that have pointed out it, its lifespan. But usually I know from the literature I've come across, frogs can last even some had even go up to 16 years. Okay, great. Thank and you for let me just look if there's another question. Yeah, there is another question from uh, Joshua says, yeah, you can just go through it quickly. This is an awesome presentation. Thanks, Tom, for the presentation. What is the red list status of this frog? Uh, the rest, uh, the red list status for this frog is critically endangered and uh, the population is decreasing. Uh, from what the threats we've mentioned, the, the population is decreasing and the uh, red list, uh, the IUCN red list uh, status uh, uh, is critically endangered. Great. I think I've answered that. Then we yeah. have Barbara. Um, uh, this, what's your take on the state of exotic trees in regards to specific type of frogs? Uh, the exotic trees are not suitable habitat for the frog. And that's for me, one of the main reasons is because of the type uh, from my from my kind of literature and the kind of habitat uh, whatever I've encountered in the field is because of the kind of or uh, micro habitat this uh, frog relies on it relies on um, indigenous forest cover and that involves the the ground which has a lot of uh, leaf litter or the decaying blocks which are supported by enough moisture so exotic trees are not suitable for the species. Uh, that's my take on the on the on that, and also from what we've encountered before. Mm -hmm. and another question, if we have. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara, for the question. Uh, Hub, uh, how does it reminded me? It's Galago. Uh, the 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 type of uh, monkey is I called met. Galago. The primate is, is is Galago. Yeah, and there's one from uh, Joseph Achami. Thanks for the presentation. Do you think the frogs can survive in a conservative area apart from the data hills? Uh, that's very difficult to, to pinpoint uh, in that uh, um, a conservative area means that uh, we will have to transfer the microhabitat of the frog to that area. And that includes a, a, a because we cannot take it to, to a conservative, a conservancy in maybe like Kipia or uh, Mount Kenya. Because of the temperatures, uh, uh, the, the rainfall pattern, the reproductive pattern, and many other things that involve predatory, uh, of predation, I'll say how the ecosystem is connected. So this is a this is a, a big uh, a big thing that will need so many scientific studies to transfer it into a conservancy conservancy so that uh, it can enable or uh, it survive uh, survival. Uh, what are its main predators? Usually, uh. It's main uh, for most frogs. Uh, of, uh, one of uh, its predators uh, is snakes. Then uh, for
for the eggs, we have ants uh, and small insects. But for the for the frog itself, we will snakes and birds. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Thomas, for going through the questions that came in through the chat box. And uh, so to the participants, uh, if you feel you have any other question, you are free, you can raise your hand, we unmute you, and then um, you can ask your question directly. Uh, there's another one from Joshua says, hello, Thomas, just a quick one. Has the species been recorded in Mbololo forest? Yes, uh, the species has been recorded in Mbololo forest. Even the, I think the video is from Mbololo as well. And then uh, uh, we started our work. Uh, no, we started our work in Gangao Forest, uh, but it's been recorded in Bololo before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think several of them have been recorded in Bololo. Uh, there is even a study uh, that was published in 2018, uh, uh, indicating where it was. It was a. Uh, it was a uh, uh, located. Or recorded. Good. Thank you for that question. Any other question from the audience before we bring the session to an end? Any other question? Any comment? Any addition? Uh, as I finish, um... I'll briefly summarize the uh, Kenya Hapata Fauna Working Group. And uh, I'm the treasurer. Uh, the chairman is here, uh, Howard Atubwa, and uh, we had uh, Ron Kimani as the treasurer, uh, the organizing secretary. And uh, we, as a working group, we are part of Nature Kenya, and uh, we are a working community, a uh, working group mainly focused on reptiles and uh, amphibians. And these are our main these are part of our many activities we do and in case you need anything any clarification or any rescuing or uh, or uh, on most occasion uh, we've been called to places whereby people have been have snakes there and they need rescuing we've done that so we are actively involved in many conservation uh, activities and you can join us by joining Nature Kenya, becoming a member of Nature Kenya, and then uh, joining us is not at a fee. Once you join Nature Kenya, you become a default member. By default, you, be, you, you join any group you want, and we welcome you immediately become a member of Nature Kenya. You can come and take part in our activity. You can come and learn. Like earlier this year, we had um, amphibian course, uh, a reptile and amphibian course, you can be coming to such kind of, uh, of, of activities. You are welcome. And then uh, I want to give big thanks to John uh, Maganga and Mkombola from, from um, Taita Hills, that's uh, Dawida in the video where, where they hosted us and we're hoping that they will give us the kind of warm welcome we received last time. Thank you. And I also want to thank uh, Howard and uh, Vincent Mchai from the museum, uh, National Museum of Kenya for, for facilitating and being part of uh, the activity and making sure that the activity was a success. Thank you. Richard, quickly, can I ask a question? Yes, please go ahead, Rupi. Sorry, I don't know how to raise my hand. Um, but Thomas, that was such a fascinating talk. Thank you so much. Um, but you know, we're talking about community participation, how do we involve communities in conservation programs? Um, I found uh, the project under Dr. Gladys Zikuzoma uh, the lady of the walking with gorillas in Uganda, very interesting. It's all about um, indirect benefits to the people, to the communities living along. You may not be able to give them handouts, but you may be able to provide services to them, uh, like healthcare. So her organization, you should Google it, is conservation through public health. 
Yes, I, I will thank you more. Thank you very much. Thank you so uh, much. Well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Always uh, great to have you on board. Uh, Sese, you have a question? Yes, I have a comment. Yes, go ahead. This is to the whole uh, team working on uh, this water frog and or just specifically species that have, that are, exist in the Taita Hills area, species that cannot move from one forest to another. Uh, you can tell that there is this isolation of uh, yeah isolation. So you find that they form some they are, since they are found in these small small pockets of forests that are that are disappearing. In the long run, I would if 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 you get resources, it would be possible. It would be okay. Rather, it would be great if you look at the genetic genetics of these species, so that we see if um, we are getting new. Well, they are they are becoming new wara, or they are becoming different from what uh, what they were few or many years ago. Yeah, thanks. Yes, thanks, Sese, uh, for that input. Yeah, the, this will be an interesting uh, uh, area of exploration in that we are able to to see uh, is there any changes? Are they? Uh, uh, the, and diverse diversifying and then uh, adapting to different microclimate in this in this forest uh, uh, probably Gangao being different from uh, Bololo or or do we have any genetic variation that is ongoing uh, I appreciate that for the input and we pray that uh, one day we get the resources and be able to to do further uh, to go further and uh, explore this area um, for it, I think it was Grace who mentioned about the the activity, the the gorilla project in Uganda. Um, I think I've seen that uh, documentary, uh, and uh, this is what we pray for in all species, not just even this one, even the the birds and everything. And we pray that this indirect benefit can really show the community why they need to 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 conserve these species. Thank you. We pray that we get the resources to, to that extent and be able to have such a big impact. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tom. Yes, Beryl, you have a question? Uh, Beryl, Beryl, we can't hear you. Yes, go ahead. I'm saying thanks so for the presentation. And I'm just are you able to record the data what you from outside the forest that is in people's farmland? And uh, um, how many, where was the population more? I mean, between the two sides. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Daktari, for the question. This is one of my mentors, uh, um, and I appreciate so much for her effort and mentoring she's she's put into my career and uh, education as well. And uh, in our sampling, we never encountered any 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 Taitawati frog outside the. The, the forest blocks we didn't and and that probably could be because we didn't do sampling outside the the forest block we could we could link it to that way uh, probably in another in another activity we'll try to do the sampling outside but uh, from the community community engagement forum they cited uh, they mentioned meeting it on the road, seeing it across the road. Uh, they mentioned encountering it, not just in the forest, outside probably on the road. When others said they have, they have met it while going to school. So such kind of things, meaning that it's been recorded outside, but we as researchers on the ground, we didn't do that. Uh, the, the other question was uh, if... Richie can remind me. The other question was? 
No, it was just that one. If you didn't get them outside, then I was asking, where, where did you get more? But if you didn't get them outside, oh. then... Yeah, 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 we didn't get... Uh, but among the forest block, uh, we got more in uh, in, in Gangao. Oh, we got more in Gangao. And then uh, that was uh, the, the silver-like coloration. And then uh, the red-like coloration, which we found to be so interesting, we got it in Chadia. So this is also an area of exploration whereby uh, we could explore uh, is the type of sub substrate yeah, determining uh, the, the the way the the skin coloration looks. And as Sese has said, is this leading to genetic uh, variation? So that's an area of uh, exploration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tom, for that. Uh, Rupi is asking uh, your email, and maybe you can uh, share it in the chat box so that uh, whoever is in here and also would like to engage with you more about uh, the presentation that you've just done, they can easily do it. Maybe your email and your phone number, if you want mine, through the chat box. Okay, oh, that will be fine. Uh, let me share it in uh, just now. Okay, no problem. So maybe as the speaker shares uh, his contacts, any other question from uh, the audience? Before... Yeah, the email is there and uh, his phone number in the chat box. So you can uh, freely pick it up from there and uh, engage with him further if you would like to. So if there is no any other question, any other comment from the audience uh, from uh, Nature Kenya, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today, virtually for this uh, very interesting, interactive and educative talk. Uh, thank you to the Kenya Hepatofauna Working Group for successfully putting their minds together uh, to make this uh, presentation a success. Uh, thank you very much to our presenter today, Thomas Odeo. And uh, all of the participants who have sacrificed their time to be with us. I also recognize the presence of um, our community members from Taita Hills, um, Kombola, and John Maganga. Thank you very much for your exceptional work. Uh, we, don't, we really don't take it for granted. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much and uh, have a nice week and weekend ahead. And also to wish you in advance happy festive season. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.